Hello, welcome to Florian Models. Here we are on Friday the 1st of November 2019. Yet another month slips by. This year's really, really flying absolutely crazy. Anyway, big thank you to everybody who joined us last night. Obviously after the live show, me and the guys. Hopefully Nathan gets well soon. He's got a week to recover for Telford um, because obviously that is going to be the next big thing. The headache is almost over as we call it, pretty much. I've had orders come in today. I've had more sanders turn up today. I've had another 9,000 sanders arrive today and I've still got another about 37,000 to arrive next week. Needless to say, they're not all just for the show, but uh, definitely having a mass restock at the moment. You might know as well, we've done a few new things as well. There's a few changes to the storm with the sanders and stuff like that. And I'll show you all about that a little bit later on. Anyway, the week started off on Monday where we carried on with the actual Meng. This is the book uh, SA-11 stroke 17 missile system. I have to say, as I said, you know, during the build of this, it's a real love-hate relationship. I love the look of it, I love the design of it, I love in the way it goes together. It's just that I'm hating the fiddliness of it. It's got incredibly fiddly parts, but actually it does work, which is the weird thing to all of this. This back system all works and it all seems to come together. So in some ways, although it's really fiddly and it's a little bit of a mind blower, some ways of getting it together, it does work. So I know it's a bit of a gimmick when it does all work because let's face it, once we finished it and it's done, pretty much that'll be it, it'll never move again. But it has been nice that the thought of it is all in there. Anyway, uh, the next part of that is up with you. Uh, if I actually go through in here, there we go. Sorry, that's the one we want. So this is for the actual uh, book missile system. Uh, it's down in here, as you can see, there's various photos and then obviously guys, if you wanna go off, you just click onto here. You'll be zipped off to the actual uh, video build area with all the videos that are going on, full details on chat and discussion about the actual video right the way down there. So anyway, uh, the last part that that went up uh, would have been, as it says, he scrolls to the bottom, getting there, part four. Okay, so part four is up with you right now. So if you want to go off, you can see all about that. That's up on there. Hopefully, well, there will be, there'll be another part of that up with you next week, which will basically get it finished. Technically, it's all together. Then they'll obviously, when we come back from our little mini break after Telford, obviously with the run-up to Telford, then it'll just be straight into paint with this one. I'm picking up some paint. Matt's had ordered it through me through the PM store. So I'll be bringing that with me uh, back from Telford. And then obviously afterwards, we can get on and get it through. So basically, it is all done. As you would have seen on the live show uh, yesterday, I went through the motions of showing about the track. The track's all done. So literally, it's into paint and weathering. And with that particular one, really looking forward to it because at the end of the day, we can do so much with it be an armor with you know the scope you can put it into a muddy situation you can go for quite clean you go for a new look you know so I'm probably going to do some various different things that I haven't really done before hoping to have a go with weathering pencils because I've dissed them as being a gimmick but a lot of people have said no they're not they really work when you know what you're doing with it so I'm going to give them a fair crack on this one and see actually how we get on with them but anyway it has been a lot of fun even though the kit is a little bit flashy but definitely it's one of those ones where you get your teeth into it and it's really coming along really really nicely so anyway part four of that is up part five will be up with on Monday as normal uh other things then we've got going on this week uh where are we here we go if we go in the vlog section that's the easy one uh, okay we've got going in there so that was obviously on monday down in there and then on tuesday uh I had a little bit of a conversation with you guys, uh, obviously about a few things, but I had a, a little thing about um, mental health and uh, frustrations perhaps, and the hate and the various things that surround the hobby and us as a lifestyle. I've had loads of great feedback from you guys have been absolutely amazing. And like I say in there, at the end of the day, it's all about keeping things into a perspective. This is a hobby. So when people are like laying on the hate and all the rest of it, if that's really all they've got to worry about, they're incredibly sad you know because there's a lot there's other things going on and like lots of us have you know there's other things going on in the real world which are you know terrible things you know there's illnesses and deaths and various things going on and relationship breakups and all of those things so when you're trying to do your hobby just to perhaps zone out for a little bit getting hate and negative feedback and stuff like that it's just it's just not on it's what not what you need so anyway i speak about it at length and i've had literally i don't know i must have had maybe 30 40 people message me directly about it about their obviously accounts how they feel about it and stuff like that as well as stuff on the forum generally so if you haven't seen that one 
um, guys it might be worth just going over there because again it's not just my thoughts it's other people's thoughts as well you'll see it down in the comments from them on the forum about how they think it's all about and how it's all going and stuff like that plus the fact it was the Q&A day as well so there was lots of questions going on and various things uh, and one of them was obviously all about uh, airbrushes uh, and when we did the actual video as you might know my airbrush was actually a little bit dirty Hello and welcome to Flory Models. So today we're going to talk about airbrushes and cleaning them. Haven't done it for a while um, and this really stems from the other day when I was trying to show uh, one of the members uh, a problem with his airbrush with mine. I need to know it was rock hard. Now as you might know I have shifted, I say shifted, I haven't totally stopped using, still use them as daily drivers but the Infinity, uh, both of them, as you see I've got two of them and I've got obviously this one the AL for something a little bit more cheaper but as far as I'm concerned just as good. So what we've got down in here is the actual uh, PS270 Procon airbrush. Um, again this thing sort of retails for £120, this one's around about £250. From my point of view, this one actually is a better airbrush than this one. The only downside to this particular one is needles and nozzles are a little bit more uh, finicky, uh, shall we say, to sort of get right and set up and stuff like that. But when it's working and day-to-day -day driving, as this one is, it is absolutely a, a fantastic airbrush with no problems whatsoever. But this is all going back to, uh, obviously I went to show and these ones have been, uh, and you can probably see, like this is totally rock hard dry. I haven't used this airbrush now in probably a couple of weeks, it's totally gone off. And then again, this one is, yeah, it's just rock hard. The needle is solid, uh, we've got no movement down in there whatsoever, and generally they've had it okay so one of the members said we I do a little video on showing how to get them working again and all stuff like that as I said I've done these before but not when they've really been this bad normally if I'm using my airbrush like this one I use it pretty much every single day it doesn't have time to dry up and go rock hard okay and cause problems like we've seen here so this is quite a nice one what I've got just down in here is my little go bag as I call it this is what I take with me when I go anywhere else so when I'm up at the PM store demonstrating airbrushing and things like that this is what I go with so in here I have a very simple setup of uh, pipettes because they're always quite handy to have floating around I've got pipe cleaners good old-fashioned pipe cleaners okay I've got a little mixing stick which mine is toothed at the end you might see that it's actually cut away that's so it fits inside one of these it's a homemade tool okay I've got a glass uh, pipette thingy all right and then down in here I've got my obligatory cotton buds as you imagine because obviously you always need cotton buds but also I have a set of seals nozzles and spares for pretty much all of the HS range and I have down in here a little Mac valve as well with a quick release just in case I go somewhere and they haven't got one so obviously I've got everything that fits to my airbrush setup the two key bits in here though are these two so this is let me see all of that out of the way. This is probably the most important things I've got. This is a reamer, okay, and it's a, a cleaning tool for the nozzles uh, out of H&S brushes. Now, I say H&S, definitely only use it on a harder and steam bag. Don't stick it in anything else because it's not designed for it. The chances are you'll splay at the end and you'll ruin it. The other thing as well, I've got a cleaning brush here and the end is designed to fit in H&S brushes. You buy it, you know, the reamer, I have no idea how much that is. The brush thing's a couple of quid very worth having them definitely if you haven't it's not necessary uh, but it just makes things a lot easier so where should we start okay this airbrush you can see the needle has no pole it's just had it so what we're going to do is a quick disassembly to see what's going on we'll do each one in turn and then we might find differences between them all right so usual thing we're going to slacken off the nut and as you might imagine this does not pull out the back it's done so what it's actually done is dried on the seal now this one here is the CR plus as you can see it means it's got three seals in it it's called triple okay but the thing is it ain't going anywhere what you can actually do is do the collet up a little bit quite tight push down and then pull it back let go undo the collet let it fall forward naturally and then pull it back what you're actually doing is dragging the needle out of the back okay and then you can then just pull it back okay and then it goes tight and then pull it back and they say now it's got a little bit of movement it's starting to go in and out on its own so we should and again this is one of those should start to wiggle free from the rear 
Okay, so it's not quite going, so we're just going to do that up nice and tight again. And then we're going to pull it back, let go. And all we're doing is just tightening and walking it out the back. And there we go. So all you've done is you've literally walked it out. So when you look on here, you can probably see it just there. You've got a little bit of dirt. And when you run your finger over it, that's where the problem is. Also, at the end here, you can see we've got a lot of debris and dirt coming off just down in this area as well. So that's not very good. We don't want that. Next, we need to get the front off if we can. So, and this is what I was trying to show on the show, mine is completely rock hard, all right? So from that point of view, self-leveling finish. You need something with a bit of bite, okay? Mind your work surface, because obviously if you put this over your work surface on your cutting mat, you will not have a cutting mat very long. So what we're going to do is, we're going to do this, and then we're going to get one of my little dishes. So I've got a little dish here. I'm just going to pop a little bit of thinners into it. Okay, and the chances are you've just got build up on the end of this, all right? So all we're going to do is just put a dab of this right the way around this seal, and we're going to let it start to eat its way in. We're also going to get a bit of this, and we're just going to brush it around in this end as well. So we're getting a bit of thinners going in and down into this entire end to brush the front. And then what hopefully will happen is we're going to start to soften off all the areas with the self-leveling thinners. So you could use any type of lacquer thinners or cellulose thinners, anything like that. And this is just going to soften out all of these different areas. All right. But we need to get in here. I don't recommend so much soaking them and stuff like that. But I think literally just coming in and then that way you should be able to get a grip on it. And there we go, it's coming undone. So now we can undo this and it feels really not nice at all. Okay, so that is now off and the nozzle is welded in here and you can probably see we've got lots of stuff going on. So what we're gonna do, is just gonna brush some of this on here just to help get all of this going. You can see it's just loaded with paint down in that end. So we're just popping it in. What we're going to do is just sit it in there to soak. Okay. Same time, we're going to look in here, and as you can probably see, or hopefully you can see, this is loaded with paint in here as well. So we're just going to get a bit of thinness, and we're going to brush it around in here. And all we're trying to do is get everything working, just soften everything up. So, you know, I'm just going to brush this on the body, so it can start to eat what's all over the body of this as well. And you could, if you wanted to, totally submerge it, but I don't think really you need to. At the end of the day, I don't think that's a necessary. Okay, so we've got it like this. And we're just going to grab a cloth. Okay, so that's come up quite nice. And then we're just going to come in here. And we're just going to do this. And then what we're going to do is get this off. And again, you can see we've got nasty crud and horribles down in here. So we're just going to give this a brush. And again, just dry paint literally all over this. So we're just going to come in. And we're just going to wipe it all around. And again, I know there'll be people saying just soak it and leave it and all the rest of it. But the thing is, I'm not a fan of just leaving things soaking in volatile chemicals because you just don't know what's going on. Okay. So there we go, that's one very nice clean colour cut. Okay, we've still got a little bit of dirt and crud all around in here, so what we're going to do is take the brush. Okay, and again, don't do this anywhere where it could flick over your model because this will be flicking everywhere. You could use a toothbrush, obviously, or anything else like that. You've got an old toothbrush. Okay, we're just cleaning out those threads. And there we go, that's looking so much better. Okay, quite a nice one. All right, even on your cap on here, this one is actually not too bad, but you even get build up round on this area, and then this can cause problems when you're trying to seat this on, it won't go on very nicely or anything else, but that's pretty good on that one. All right, 
Now, what we're going to do is disassemble the back. So try and come in here. If this back part won't release, if you go into your bag of tools, you should have the key for it that actually came with your airbrush. And that's what these pin things are. So if you ever wonder what they are, that's what this is. Okay. So grab your pin. Okay, usually you just get one in a set. You just pop it in here. Okay, and it's like a key for it. And then you're just going to go counterclockwise that's it right the way around and it will just unscrew okay and again what you're looking for is a build up of dirt and stuff all in here so a good way to check it just come in with a cotton bud and as you can see there's grime and dirt and everything in the threads so again we're going to give these a clean out and then also we're going to test the theory a little bit of thinners down into here and push it through up to you up to those nozzle area yeah, you can see it's not nice at all. Technically, you shouldn't have anything coming far this far back, but it does. Okay, so that is done there. Now what you can do is obviously start to work on the chamber. So you can actually take your brush, this little guy here, okay, and just whiz it around in here. Now there is a little seal in the bottom here, which hopefully we'll see in a minute, that will turn white as a little Teflon seal. And if you wanted to, you could replace them and all the rest of it. There we go, that's a bit in there, and then hopefully you'll see a nice white seal. Here it is, just down in there. Again, it's not one that needs changing, but it is in your spares pack. If you did want to whip it out and change it, you can actually change it. Okay, so that's just a bit of start of a clean, but you can probably see that's well gummed up in there. So now you can use some of your tools. If you take your needle, okay, pop it in here backwards, and then look what comes out the end. And you wonder why your needle's all stuck. But what happens is, now we've put some thinners into this, it starts off. Now, one-way street, go in, pull it all the way out. Now, this needle will be, no matter where you do it, covered in junk. Okay? So, all we're going to do is just going to go through a couple of times from the back, backwards. Don't stab yourself. Normally, they're very sharp. But you can see on the end here, you get a tiny lump. You're just cleaning out the seal. And you'll notice it just flows through... No problem at all. But this is good if you haven't got a proper tool. There is a tool that actually you can buy for doing this, I do believe. But it's one of those. I don't think it's totally necessary. Okay, so that's in there now, just like that. So we know the back end's clear. So what we're going to do is holding it downwards, we're just going to pop in here with our brush. And then all the rubbish will just go out the front with any luck. And it'll start to drip through. You can see it dripping through there. It'll be nasty, horrible yucky stuff we're just going to come in from this side and then what we're going to do take our little bit of thinners on this and we're going to push this right in here you can see it comes up goes through okay and then what we're going to do is just work it back and forth and this again you can see all the colors you've been painting with over the last few months will show, should flush through literally like this okay and this is literally it it's just a case of going around in here and doing it so if you ever wondered where the air comes from that's that slot down the side there at your sort of three o'clock position as you look at it okay if there's not one on the other side that's where the air is so the air comes up the side down here into this chamber but you can see it's looking quite silvery and nice and clean in there now and then what we're going to do is just going to grab another bit more thinners on here and we're going to push this up to the seal but not through the seal so again, just going through, wiggling it back and forth, pull it out. Oh, the Indiendos, I know, stop sniggering at the back, but it works. Okay, so then down in here, good old clean. I think this is the worst one of them all. Okay, so we're looking all pretty good down in there now. But what we're going to do now, because the chances are we've pushed up some rubbish up to this needle area, and there we have, we have indeed... So you can see it there on the needle. This is thick stuff, and that's where we were pushing. So again, in from the back, right the way through. Clean off the needle, both sides. Go back through. And you should find your needle's just flowing through there now. There's hardly anything to stop it. And I don't know if you guys can see it, but there we go. You can see daylight. That's always a good sign. Okay. So pretty much, that's it now. That's the body part done. You don't need to go any further with that one. If you wanted to, you can just pop your finger over the end. We're just going to pop a little bit of thinners in here. So I've got my finger over the end, stop it coming forward. We're going to let a little bit flow through, just so it's all in that area now. And all we're going to do is just going to come in with our brush. 
and we're just going to push in and go through and we'll let that dump out, clean it off, clean cotton bud, and it's starting to go clean now, we're not really getting any nasties or gnarlies, anything off of this whatsoever. Okay, so what we're going to do is clean off that body and pretty much that's good to go. All right, so these parts here, to be honest, you shouldn't have anything on here, but sometimes you get a little bit, it does come back. And if it does, just clean it off this entire section and obviously making sure you're nice and clean here through here and making sure this spring is nice and springy and you haven't got any paint buildup that's got to the back here that may be interfering with it. And again, if you unscrew here, push this back and hold it, this little thread. So we're just going to get tiny little bits thinners. Just let that brush in and eat in and then we're just going to give that a quick just brush off. And don't forget there's a slice right the way through this and there should be because that's what clamps down onto your needle. Okay. But again, that should be totally springy, no problem at all, happy with that. And again, just down in here, you can see we've got dry paint on this. It's just a wipe usually does the trick on this one. And again, you just want to make sure you're nice and clear and making sure the slot through the middle is clear as well, so there's nothing to jam it. Now we're back to this guy, so hopefully it's been soaking a while. So actually what we can do is get our needle into this. Okay, so this is properly welded in there. So what you don't want to do is pull at it with this in. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this time just to come in and to hopefully get this back area out. All right, so what we're going to do is, where's my reamer gone? Here's my little reamer. So we're just going to grab our reamer. We're going to posh it in the back here and it's all soft. And we just twist and as you can see, it's loaded with paint. And this is where it's dried all around the needle. And you can see it's thick, gooey, horrible paint. Okay, it's not nice. And again, it's all to do with clean flow and all of that right the way through. Okay, so what I'm going to do is just empty this out whilst it's in here. And then Normally when it happens, there should be a little gap around the front. Sometimes if you get no paint, no air, no nothing, it's because there's no air getting around this gap, okay? The thing is, if you push anything on there, you could splay the top and it could cause problems when it comes through. But you can probably see this has got buildup of paint around it. The chances are that's what's holding this in place, all right? So what we're going to do is, is just literally just try and get my nail under it, just to try and lift it out a little bit. Not really happening. I'm just going to grab a little blade. I think we need a screwdriver. Okay, so we're just going to try, if I can, pop a screwdriver. A smaller one. <coughs> smaller blade, just under the lip. And just twist just to lift this off and there you go you can see that's horrible nasty gnarly not nice at all drop them both in there give them a good swill about again little trick with this if you fill it up with thinners and then place it on paper you can drag it out and you can then empty it and that will help to push it through and hopefully you can see we've actually got daylight through there already we're just starting to Okay, and then again, you've got this little brush, which is designed for here. A little bit of thinners and a good old wiggle. Again, this is loaded. Probably one of the best ones we've done for showing what not to do. Okay, good old clean. And it's important to make sure the outside of this is clean right the way round as well okay it's not all about just the the front you'll know when you've got it all out of this because this reamer just knocks on metal and it feels very hollow in here and it's not really doing anything so you know you're pretty much clean okay so that's quite handy and then what we're going to do i'm going to grab a pipette i'm going to suck up a little bit place it on the end and we're just going to blow it through and it just went straight through no problems at all 
and you can blow it or whatever you want to do just to make sure it's clean and healthy but there's nothing wrong with that nozzle you can inspect it so you want to check the tip make sure it's not split make sure there's no splay in it or anything else like that and that is really nice you can blow through it which is always a good sign and then you just want to check for daylight which we can so we know that's nice and clear now at the same time if you haven't got a reamer you can use an older needle and just wipe around with it so and then what you can do is you can literally just push through uh, and you'll notice you might get a little bit of gunk we're not in here because this is pretty clear but sometimes you can just give it a little scrape around like this and then sometimes a little bit there still look you can just eke out a little bit use an old needle not a nice one and you can actually get little bits out of it just like that okay right nozzle itself so this is two parts you've got the inner and the outer it's really important this inner bit is clear so again use your brush whatever you've got using the big end we're just going to put it in here jog it right up and down just to make sure because you need to clean out the flutes on each side all three sides so that way the air can flow through because don't forget just as important as paint is air with an airbrush hence its name okay and you want to make sure all three flutes are totally totally clear next up make sure the nozzle hole at the front is clear okay make sure everything is absolutely spotless now this will then twist off because this is the pinch cleaner but you might have a different one on here and we're just going to clean behind that so that's all good and um, we're just going to clean the thread and again this seal doesn't normally need changing this one's an old one in here to be honest and it's very thin there it's thick there so it might need changing if you do it is literally just a case of stick your nail behind it it comes off if you have got a replacement set to be honest i'm going to replace that one okay you get a replacement set this is for the infinity and all the others okay and it's literally a case of match up the one you've got which i think is probably this one don't forget it might look different because it's been in here forever that one looks too big but it could be that it's shrunk on so what we're going to do actually i think it literally is it's shrunk on because that fits on there beautifully just like that okay so now with all the parts clear apart from this one we can hopefully reassemble and we can check so we're just coming in with more thinners just in here okay clean cotton bud okay so with all of that nasty stuff done we're going to put this together and then hopefully it's going to work okay so we'll put that there we've got the needle so we've just got these bits here we're just going to move them out of the way we'll just pop this out of the way okay so body you're happy with no problem at all with that one so first up we've got the nozzle and the needle they're now looking a lot better than they were before so that's literally going to fit in and it should just drop in feel quite metal on metal okay you shouldn't feel any sponginess in that at all screw on to the front again we've got that nice new seal on there all right and then we've got the pinch clean is going to go on the end okay as simple as that next up we've got the actual trigger so making sure the slot is at the front you've got the cut depending on which way you want to do it of course and it is all clear so then that's going to come in and again you want to make sure it's all nice and springy if it's not you have to deconnect the bottom bit we'll show you that in a minute uh, just to make sure but it should be absolutely fine then you've got the rear tip for you push it in hold it at the back with your finger and then start to screw it in when it screws in it then aligns with the slot holds on to the trigger and that should be bouncy as hell okay collet goes on the back that's actually just what's going to clamp onto that needle okay so that is on there just like that then you've got the needle itself and this is just going to go in and you're just going to let it glide hopefully right through right up to the end and it should then just come in and stop okay and then again we're just going to make sure everything is snappy and obviously if you've got one of these you can slacken this off and that's a bit looser or you can screw this right in and have a very snappy trigger okay so that's how that is i'm happy of how that is going all right then we've got the body at the back sits on 
pretty good. Top cut. Again, you might have different ones, different sizes. Top off. And we have one clean, hopefully, ready to go airbrush. So start with, just going to plug it in. Hear the noise? So what's happening there, it's coming out of here. If I put my hand over, what that is, is that this at the front is not seated properly or fully. Tighten it up. Still not happy because you can hear it's coming out the top here. Okay. So this at the front is not sitting on properly. So what we're going to do is just going to slacken off this area, draw the needle out. And then we're going to pop the front off. And then what that is, is that something is not happening. So what happens is, is that this isn't totally flush up against the back part here. That's enabling the air to come round and instead of out the front, back up the actual nozzle, okay, and out of here. So it's actually getting behind this seal on here. Now, the reason that could be is because this seal here is the wrong one. Okay, which it probably is. So I think I've got the wrong one there. So let me just grab the correct one. I think it's actually this one because it's a little bit smaller. Which I think this one is a lot better. And make sure it's flush right the way to the front. This one here actually I think is one of the other ones. Okay, so then what we're going to do, we're just going to sit this back on here. Put it in. And it's going to go back in, tighten up, that feels better already, okay, pop the needle in, seat it, don't over ram it forward or anything else like that, okay, so then what we're going to do, tap it, lock it, press, ah. nothing coming out the top, sounds very nice, it's all good and snappy, let's pop the back on, that's really nice indeed. Unlock the trigger, give us full movement. It sounds right. Okay, now I'm not obviously going to fill this full of lacquers and start spraying it around. So we've got some acrylic airbrush cleaner just into here. And then what we're going to do, we'll just move our stuff. We've got this little guy here, we'll turn this over. And you can see we've got a perfect spray pattern no problem with that whatsoever and that's just running at full tilt very happy of how that's going and it's not crackling it's not popping it's not making any sounds and that's really what you're going for and we're just going full pelt and when it runs out it's an instant run out it doesn't crackle it doesn't spit as it's running out and that is it you're absolutely fine and then I'll give your airbrush a wipe over with this stuff because it's not quite as aggressive as the uh, lacquers and also this has got like a bit of soap in it and things like that as well so it's quite nice just to finish off your airbrush and have it looking literally and working like new and that is literally it. That's probably the hardest cleanup I've ever had to do for whatever reasons. And again, this thing's been standing around for weeks, never been used, anything else. And that is good to go and spray clear coat lacquers or anything else. I'd be very happy to put those through. Again, I can dial down my air pressure. I've got a Mac valve just on the side here. Okay. You can hear it's a lot less now. Turn down a bit more. Okay. So if you can hear this noise... You hear that clicking, that popping sound? What that is, is this under here is not screwed in properly. So this part here, this one has become loose. Okay, so if you hear that noise, if I increase it, that is literally, there's not a good seal on the bottom. So you tighten it up. No problems at all, okay? Now, the reason I was talking about this is because this one, if you continue to unscrew it, you can physically unscrew the entire air assembly off the bottom here, okay? And then what happens sometimes is you can get dirt and grime build up in there, dirt and grime on here, you shouldn't ever. But if you're hearing that noise, this is because this is over 
untightened, if that makes sense. So what you want to do is then hold it at the bottom, screw it right the way in, and then this should come all the way to the off. But sometimes if you turn it off a little bit more, if you watch the entire assembly, all of this is turning, and that's when you're getting that popping sound. So if we just reapply air, there's no popping sound or anything whatsoever. But if I was to over untighten this, hear the sound? Also, the other way to notice, when I press for air, some of it is getting lost and it's actually coming out the top here, okay? So when we actually press for air, if we just wait a minute for the compressor, you hear it's coming out of here, it's coming out the top, it's coming out of everywhere, it's not coming out the front. And again, tighten slightly. The only place you should hear air is this end. If you're hearing it from here or in here, then there's a problem, okay? Uh, but that is literally it, okay? Just air, and then the reason you can hear that hissing sound is obviously it's a vacuum being caused in here, which is pulling the paint forward and then off the front, okay? And there we go. So, one clean, as new, brand new airbrush. To be honest, that one has fought me more than any of these actually will, so I've probably covered everything in this one. So I'll give this effect exactly the same to the other ones and away we go. But also the thing is, have a little bit of, you know, respect for your tools as well. Every now and again, just give them a wipe down, give them a proper clean up, give them a proper treat, give them a birthday like that and you'll be good to go. Now I know what you're thinking, Phil, you haven't given it any lube, super lube and things like that. I stopped doing that literally about a year ago after I was contacted by, uh, I think he was a member, um, who was telling me about the problems he's been having with super lube and oils in general with his airbrush. And since he stopped it, he doesn't get half the problems he's had with needles jamming and blocking and stuff. It's almost like it acts as a, a gum agent and that's what things are sticking to. And I have now stopped doing that as well. So I don't actually use uh, uh, any types of lubes or anything else. It's nice, clean, it's good to go. And I must admit, I've never had a problem, never had a problem whatsoever. But there we go, hopefully that helps out. That's a good old walkthrough on what to do when your airbrush goes rock hard and you've had it. But I'd be very happy now to stick lacquer through that and just spray a clear coat because I'm now, it's clean, it's flowing really well and it's good to go. So there we go, hope that helps. So there we go, squeaky clean, look, brand new looking airbrush and it is, it's all fine and nice and everything and that's the thing. So don't worry about it, I am a little bit of an animal as we know with airbrushes and things like that, but as I said, if you follow those steps, work your way through, you should be good to go and hopefully if you guys have had problems in the past with like no air, no paint, various things, that explains it in that little video as well. I am doing it as a little bit of a standalone, it will make its way over to the tutorials area for really troubleshooting and stuff like that. But what's nice for me is to actually show that because normally I've got airbrushes and because I'm using them every day, you know, I was spraying with that one this morning, um, they don't have time to go rock hard like a lot of you guys do when you haven't used it for a week or two it's been sat in the drawer or in the holder you've come to it and it's rock solid you know normally i don't have that thing so having a couple like that that have done it it was like do you know what i can do a video on that so anyway i can't remember who asked for me to do a video on it but there you go that's the video actually for that one anyway that was tuesday as i said if you want to go off and see that one uh help yourself that is uh, down in there in the tuesday section wednesday uh was obviously live uh, with me and Matt, there we are looking, well, yeah, I don't know why that's square, my aspect ratio, it is wider when you when you press play on it, honest, I think if you go, it's not, so for some reason it's done it as a, uh, I don't know actually why it's square like that, but anyway, there you go, you can see me and Matt are actually making our, our way along and we're working on these, so this is the thing to it. We're actually working on the Buccaneers at the moment. I'm pretty much ready to get this into primer now. Everything is on. I've got the wing tips on and the various things on there like that. The speed brake section is all done. Cockpit glass I need to mask up and do, but I've done a little bit of rescribing, uh, a little bit of detail put back in where I've sanded it off and stuff like that. And I have to say, I'm really impressed, Airfix. It's a really nice kit. And again, we've been saying about it a lot, the detail that you're finding now in 72nd scale kits is amazing. This is 148 scale detail easily and in fact that's not beat around the bush here this has got far more detail than the old airfix 48 scale one that's 
horrible. Uh, but yeah, so really, really nice. Looking forward to what Airfix will be uh, announcing, obviously at Telford, because they always do their little announcements. Uh, and looking forward to some of their new kit releases next year as well. So lots coming from them. Very, very nice indeed. Also, don't forget, we actually had uh, the reviews up there. So if you want to offer, go off and see them. Did a little bit of a figure week this week. Uh, so we've got the British Army ATV quad bike with the trailer and with the soldiers. Some really nice detail with the Bronco stuff. If you haven't seen it before, you can see it there. And if you want to, you know, sort of liven up your dioramas or even just your model in general, then obviously I looked at some uh, pilot figure sets. So we've got ICM, fantastic. You, you know, you literally get one sprue. So that's why I did a video of both of them on there. But it's for the 32nd pilot set. So really you've got the uh, German Luftwaffe cadets uh, ones there, or you've got the US Air Force or United States Army Echo uh, ones as well. Okay, so they're down in there as well. So great little reviews. And I must admit, they are absolutely fantastic on those ones. Last night, obviously, it was the usual fun and games with uh, me and the guys. Um, yeah, it, you know, it's our live shows. It, it is what it is. I don't know why that aspect ratio is quite like that. I must admit, it's a little bit weird. You can go back and watch it. It is free to watch as well, as always. And you can see us down in there. And I was talking about how glossy my uh, saber was. And I say was, because it's not anymore. You'll see that in a minute. Uh, but yeah, it, again, thank you to everybody who joined us. The usual fun and games. Obviously, we had a little bit of a promotion deal for you for 10% off certain kit. I won't say about it now, because it's gone. It finished uh, just after the show. But I know a load of you went out and ordered one. Matt's got all those orders. Spoke to him this morning about it. He says a massive thank you to everybody that, that's ordered uh, and stuff like that. We were basically talking about Telford and the run to Telford, going through your questions and suggestions and everything else that's going on with that one. So um, lots to see and do on there. And that really brings us up to today, uh, to be honest with you. Um, if I just stop that, because I need to bring something up in a second. Uh, so from my point of view, we've been pushing on really nicely with the Sabre. Uh, I have given it now a, I call it a satin coat. It's not quite a, uh, a gloss coat. Uh, have I got one here? If I bring up the close camera, hold on. I go like that. Hopefully you can see how we've got a little bit of shine. You can see a little bit of writing down in there, but it's not anywhere like it was last night. So that's our Sabre and he's done and he's all ready and he's looking the part and we say we're all done. It is quite shiny still actually. I think the, the camera's over exaggerating it a bit. It's definitely not that shiny. Also you can feel it. So anyway, uh, part seven is up with you right now. It's a little bit shorter so we can get a full part uh, into part eight for the final reveal and everything else like that. But really it's gonna get you exactly to here. So what we've done is, as I said, we've worked on the gear, we've worked on the photo etch with the seat and all the detail down in there like that and really just working our way through the entire thing. It's pretty much there. What we're going to do um, next week, and when I get a spare day, I'm literally going to give this a full oil weathering. So we're going to be using oils on it. Not very often I use it on aircraft, especially like this, but I think with the natural metal finish of this one, it should bring it absolutely alive. And then that way we can polish it in and bring it back and hopefully get some of that metal luster back to it. But everything's done. I've got the seats done down in here. I've got the gear done. The canopies are all done. It's literally just all ready to go together, but we'll be covering that one. But anyway, part seven really talks about putting the wash on on, getting the flat coat on, working with the photo wedge uh, and the other bits and pieces all like that. But anyway, that's coming along really, really nicely now and that will be up with you very, very shortly. Uh, the other thing as well, we've made a few changes in the store, okay, mainly that the starter pack, it was going to get discontinued, uh, to be honest with you, on the first, but it, it has been an absolute success for us here at Flory Models. Uh, so what I've done is I've tweaked it slightly uh, and we've got a new one out now. So basically what it is, it's just had a couple of the sanders removed and replaced with other ones, okay, and just streamlined the set a little bit more. Instead of getting 22, you get 18, uh, but we've still got it up for 9.99, okay. It's just that the other one, to be honest it wasn't profitable at all for us uh, this one we can do now right the way through also we've got a little bit of thing here giving you full details of exactly what the sanders are now so if you've ever wondered look no further they are here so really uh, it's 220 grit for the fine ones okay 240 by 120 for the black one okay the weathering stick as we call it or the polishing one it's great for doing glass as you know so it's 8,000 by 20,000 grits on that one and then the classic sanders as well so this is what you get in the three pack you normally get 
get in the number five set. You get a coarse, a medium, and the fines, which are 100, and these are dual-sided as well. They're not just one grit, the uh, two grits on each side. So you've got 100 grit by 180 grit on the other side, 120, 240, 280, 300 uh, on those ones as well. So you get one of each and then two each of the coarse ones down in the pack and available from the store for a measly 9.99, okay? And also you'll be able to pick them up obviously at Telford right the way through. So those are available and also our stockists at the moment, obviously Brevco and we've got High Altitude Hobbies. They may have some of the old ones still in stock, which is obviously you get 22 sanders in those ones as always with our friends just there. And then all the other ones are slowly coming back in stock. We're just still out of stock of the actual dual ones. And that's to be honest why they're not in the sander either because we need them for other things. Uh, so they are literally out. The rest of everything else is fully in stock right the way through as always. Okay, coming right the way through. We have got new packaging coming out which is gonna be brought in line this month. And also we've got a few little changes here and there with the way the pigments go and stuff like that. But obviously full details will come out of that as it comes online later on. So, this is it. This is now the road to Telford, because obviously Telford starts for us. I'll be loading up, obviously the lorry will be loaded up from the PM store on Friday morning, and then we'll be setting up midday, uh, and then throughout the afternoon, actually on the Friday, for all you guys to come and see us actually on Saturday and Sunday. Then we're staying up there Sunday night, and then driving back on Monday, and then I'll be doing all your orders and catching up and putting stuff back in stock early part, and then I'm gonna have a mini break, probably Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, uh, and Monday, the week after just gonna have a couple of days off uh, to catch up recharge your batteries because it is pretty full on doing that one so next week you will get Monday as normal so you're going to get the next part of the actual uh, book missile system that will be up with you okay and then what I'm going to do is Tuesday Wednesday Thursday and then obviously Friday I'm going to be blogging it really okay so we're going to be doing video uh, logs like I normally do some vlogging uh, showing you exactly what's going on getting the stock all together uh, and all the details as we make our way through all right Right, so we're in our usual spot in Hall 2, right out by Wonderland Models. You can't see us. We've got a huge big stand there, 36 foot stand. So please come and see us. We get all the banners out. We have got new banners. I'm going to show you all this stuff next week. But I've got new banners for it, new posters, all that type of stuff as well. Last up, just got to mention it, the Flory Models mug. If you want to pre-order it, remember, it's members only. The 2020 mug, which is this fantastic one here and here. Obviously, you don't pay for it yet because I just need to get an idea of numbers, all right? So I know we need around about 200 mugs as we speak, but if you're thinking about you want a mug, you want one or two, or some of you have for three or four, for God's sake, how many mugs do you need? Anyway, um, they are going to be around about a tenner, okay? As I said, if we can get enough of you in, the price might drop, okay? But it, at the moment, it looks like it's going to be £10. So what we're going to do all this month, we're going to do sort of the pre-order. I'll put the order in in a couple of weeks and they'll be in by December, beginning of December, and I'll get them all out to you in time for Christmas. And then you purchase them now, then. But don't forget, if you go into the actual forum, you can see about it and it is down on there just like that. What also I'll do is next week, I'm going to take you all around the forum. I really haven't got time today uh, to get on with that one, but we do a little bit of a catch up on Monday with that to make our way through. So that's it from me. As always, I'm going to leave you with your great work from the gallery. So until Monday, happy modeling. Take care. I was not ready to fall in like I'm wasted.